The day has finally arrived when we're witnessing a new version of Liquid Freezer by Arctic and it's not only the new version in like Liquid Freezer 3 that I have right here. It comes in a variety of colors, we have it in black and white and we have loads of other sizes so 240, 280, 360 and 420. But that's not all. Because we have a black version which is a non-RGB in all of those sizes, we have white one as well in 240, 280, 360 and 420 with addressable RGB and we have the black version also in addressable RGB with all those sizes. So this is quite interesting because it gives you loads of varieties to choose from and it's a completely new product. So what I can say is Arctic has been listening for the past couple of years that you guys really wanted a white version of it and this is it. This is outstanding because now we have a different design on the pump block top. First and foremost, you still have a VRM fan which is nicely hidden and nicely attached and you can connect it quite straight forward. There's literally no philosophy in this one and you will see that quite soon. When we're talking about benchmarks, now I did a comparison uh, and I'll show it to you quite shortly. Uh, 240 against 280 because 240 this one specifically has a thicker radiator so it might compete with the 280 and I won't go into segment with the 360 because it's a bit far-fetched I would say but 240 against 240 thicker and thinner radiator and 280 the same size as the 240 as for the other example that I mentioned. But before we go into benchmarks, uh, we're going to go into detailed specifications and of course I'll touch base with tutorial on how to place the Liquid Freezer 3 to 4 or basically any other Liquid Freezer 3 on AM5 platform to give you some idea how easy it is to place everything so you don't get confused with the VRM fan and the 12 LED uh, on top of it. So let's check out the specs. Socket compatibility goes from uh, Intel LGA 1700 and AMD AM5 and AM4. Inside the box we get the MX6 uh, thermal compound and when we're talking about connectors you have 4 pin PWM for your pump and fans and VRM fan and we have LEDs with 3 pin addressable RGB connector. The weight is 1490 grams and then we go to the tubing 450 millimeters of length uh, outer diameter is 12.4 millimeters and the inner one is 6 millimeters. Now let's touch base with the CPU block. VRM fan runs from 400 to 2500 RPMs which is controlled with PWM. Pump is from 800 to 2800 RPMs also controlled with PWM. And the cold plate is copper with micro skin fins. Now the, the whole dimensions is 108 times 76 times 80 and it has 12 addressable RGB LEDs inside. The radiator is made out of aluminium and the dimensions are 277 times 120 times 38. Now the fans, we have two P12 PWM addressable RGB white fans specifically inside this box. 120 times 120 times 25 and when you take everything in, into consideration we're talking about 63 millimeters of thickness with the radiator and the fans. So I'm mentioning this because you guys now know what you can expect while placing the radiator inside the case and how much space do you have on front on top or whatever uh, you decide to go with. The fan speed of the P12 PWM ranges from 200 to 2000 RPMs. We have fluid dynamic bearing and 4 pin PWM connector as well as for the VRM and for the pump. So everything is PWM, this is outstanding. And for the 12 addressable RGB LEDs, we have 3 pin connector as per usual. Inside the box we get a Liquid Freezer 3 240 addressable RGB white PWM cable individual control PWM cable all in one MX6 0.8 grams Intel LGA 1700 mounting set and AMD mounting set. Now for the PWM uh, cables I'll like to go more into that but before that let's check out some uh, advantages compared to the Liquid Freezer 2. So you get the P fans and you already know everything about those but we have improved VRM fan which is enlarged and optimized fan which adapts the speed as I already mentioned 400 to 2500. We have improved cold plate which is increased on volume and it has optimized water channels for better heat dissipation. The fans are already pre-installed so you don't have to do literally anything and all the cables are nicely rerouted at the back and through one of the tubes giving you a possibility to actually just have one cable running out of the pump. Well, basically two. You have addressable RGB and PWM. This is outstanding. And then we have the extended radiator surface, which 
uh, has highly increased fin stack for even better heat capacity, which ensures that CPU is evenly locked to the socket for better contact for the cooler. Now let's discuss those PWM cables. You have one cable which runs from the pump block top and it's 8-pin connector. You don't have to worry about that because you're not connecting an 8-pin header to your motherboard because it doesn't exist, right? Now, the thing is, one PWM cable is all-in-one and it goes directly to your PWM header on your motherboard which automatically controls the P12s, the VRM fan right here and it controls the pump speed at the same time. This is for you guys that don't like to have multiple cables or you don't want to adjust everything individually, but for you guys that really want to go into details, you have this cable right here. So it's somewhat a splitter. So it runs four cables out of those, uh, out of that eight pin header that connected to the pump block top. One PWM header is for the pump. The other one is for the fans, the P12s. And the third one is for the VRM fan here. This is it. And of course, the fourth cable is a three pin addressable RGB header that goes directly to your three pin addressable RGB header on your motherboard to control the lights. Now, this might look a bit strange for you guys to have something like this or maybe it isn't depending on which manufacturers you encountered before because we have seen other brands using uh, block tops such as well not this ones but uh, in terms of covering up the well i'll be frankly honest hideous uh, design of this right here to make it look even nicer and in these terms we have an integrated vrm fan right here that has quite thicker propellers and uh, we have 12 leds inside the thing is, what you do is, when you connect all the cables, this is what you have to do to lock it inside the place. You have two magnets that lock the cover and it's really straightforward, there's no complications whatsoever. When you connect it, automatically the VRM starts spinning. If you connect it while the PC is turned on, because you could possibly do that, and the LED starts to light up in the color that you decide to go inside your build. Now. Uh, the mounting mechanism. This is quite straightforward. For the AM5 you have to remove two retention brackets, the plastic retention brackets that come originally with your AM5 motherboard. When you do that you have to place four spacers and two retention brackets that are acquired with the Arctic box. Uh, they go sideways and then you use four screws, two on each, to lock them into position. After that you use this pump, pump block top and you tie up two screws on those retention brackets. This, what you can notice is that there's a Arctic logo right here, which is somewhat uh, dentin shaped like, um, almost like a U profile, not specifically like a U profile, but it is a bit dentin. And this is what creates the tension to hold the block top evenly on your processor by pressing it on each side as it should, right? Uh, when you tie up the screws it kind of flattens out and uh, these two screws act like magnets or basically these are the magnets that connect to those fans which hold this cover on your processor. After that what you have to do is connect, remove the plastic foil from the copper base, place the MX6 thermal compound, connect all the cables, place the cover and you're good to go. There is no philosophy in this whatsoever. The only thing that I would like to mention apart from uh, mounting the block on the processor and everything else is that the screws that come for radiator mounting are a bit longer than we're used to, right? So I would suggest using spacers just to use those extra headroom of the screws so they don't go too deep inside the radiator because I'm not quite sure if they will damage the radiator fins or anything similar to that but just as a precaution when you're placing it on front or on top you do have that uh, distance when we're talking about the thickness of uh, the chassis just add those spacers just in case to lose that length of the screws because it will definitely hold even with two three millimeters of screws going inside the screws are a bit longer than that so use those spacers and just to be safe that's just uh, my advice for you guys uh, just do that it's quite easy now I place the liquid freezer 3 inside the Lian Li Lankul 216 on the top and the thing is the tubes are okay but the tube position on the actual pump top are beneath so you get it in a certain position where the tubes can be 
that bent, I would say. You can't uh, move them on the radiator side. You can get certain degree movement on the pump block top. Now, if you don't regulate the position of the radiator inside your case on top or on the front, the tubes might stick outside of the case, preventing you from closing the side panel. Now, this can be easily adjusted by mounting the radiator a bit further from the CPU or just finding a correct position of everything so that so that those 450 millimeter of tubes is somewhat used up in the free space of your case and that you that they won't stick up. Now it's time to check out the benchmarks. Uh, we have somewhat two comparison. One comparison is with the 280 radiator because before placing the liquid freezer tree inside the Lee and Lee Lankle 216 I accidentally had the 280 already placed inside so I decided why not do a total comparison to give you an idea how it competes with 280 and apart from the Lankle 216 I also had a 240 inside the tower 200 from thermal tech so taking everything into consideration let's start with uh, IDA 64 so uh, I used Valkyr yarn 280 in the Lankle 216 CP went up to 81 degrees Celsius and the clock speed went up to 5425 megahertz with the GPU 53 okay the GPU is totally relevant but it could bring us to some conclusions right now, uh, I used AMD Ryzen uh, 5 7600X because I didn't want to go with the, an extreme Ryzen 9. Uh, and uh, this brings us to the point where Arctic, Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 240 addressable RGB uh, CPU went up to 83 with clock speed reaching 5425 MHz and GPU went up to 52. Now, I'm not quite sure if the VRM fan actually does anything when sending the airflow towards the GPU because the bottom part of the uh, cover is uh, filled up with plastic. So it only blows to the top where the actual VRM fans are. So is there something that might blow a bit on the GPU? That's completely different. Now when we go to Cinebench R23, we have 83 degrees throughout the whole benchmarks with Yarn 280. And the clock speed is constantly 5325 MHz. The scores started 15,016 and eventually uh, do kind of hover around 15,000. One, one score did go really high at 15,182. But uh, then we go to Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 240, which uh, has thermals from 85, well, basically starts at 85, but it finishes at 84, which is one degree difference. Uh, the clock speeds were running around uh, mostly 5,300s three times reaching 5325 and the Cinebench scores were quite interesting now 14 it starts at 14750 but it also goes quite high up to 15000 it doesn't pass 15000 but mostly goes around so that's i would say a difference of 50 Cinebench points difference and then when we take a look at tough liquid 240 that was placed inside Thermaltake tower 200 uh, 75 degrees celsius on the processor but 5300 megahertz and the Cinebench scores were 500 Cinebench points lower than Liquid Freezer 3 to 40 addressable RGB. So what I can say, it can definitely compete with the 280 since it does have a thicker radiator and much more, I would say, not a complex, maybe complex design when we're talking about thin placement and the thin design inside the radiator. But it does definitely, it, it definitely can compete with the 280 in some instances. 240 it beats it without any issues and for the 360 I don't even have to mention uh, because it uh, can't actually compete with the 360 but uh, quite nice performance when we're talking about reaching 280 performance for a quite outstanding price first of all different visuals because I have to admit they finally changed it and it does look way 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 better and I'm quite satisfied with that now the best thing about this launch apart from actually getting a new liquid freezer on the market is that since they are celebrating 23 years of their existence they are doing a price reduction at least at 23 percent compared to the msrp so on amazon the white version of the liquid freezer 3 is 71.91 on their web shop while on their uh, on the amazon is 72.37 280 addressable rgb is 83.15 360 addressable RGB is 89.04 and 420 addressable RGB is 97.49. This is insane because 
nobody can co compete with this prices and performance ratio this is outstanding because you have it uh, until mid of may to grab these discounts and i would definitely suggest you hurry up and check out the links in the description below because i'll link all of them the black version from 240 to 420 uh black version addressable rgb and black and white version addressable rgb from 240 to 420 guys what can i say apart from the discount and let's put that on the side pc crazy best buy badge and pc crazy approved badge for liquid freezer 3 without a doubt i think we could expect that taking into consideration the history of arctic and their cooling capabilities when it comes to liquid freezer 2 now we have it in liquid freezer 3 with a different design where it comes with a much more appealing design i would have to say that even though for you guys that actually went with liquid freezer 2 you were you were definitely going with performance or you had uh, some idea in mind where you wouldn't definitely mind the visuals but now we have everything we have the performance we have the visuals and you have an outstanding price guys i don't think i have to mention anything else uh you know where the links are when we're and where they could be found in the meantime don't forget to subscribe hit the like button and click the notification bell for future content coming uh, quite shortly see you next time guys thanks for watching and bye bye